check out the new member gang on my channel and my 4000 gold giveaway on YouTube down in the description. Are you tired of leveling 20 and have 22 speed as melee? Too slow for O3 so you just insta pop? Well, there's a simple solution to that, the rogue. A fast, easy dodging versatile class that can do a good amount of damage and your survivability increases when with invisible. Some people may call you a noob, but that's not why you play this game. The rogue has been swept under the rug for some time now as the assassin. People have been shouting, bad DPS, in invisible is bad and useless, but now Decca has added some cool abilities with re some recent updates the last year. We have a totally new cloak from the third dimension, and the bloody cloak from the lost century, and as I said in my how to make assassin good video, we have some cool daggers that got a buff. Let's take a quick look on the daggers. Corruption Cutter. It's a rare dagger from the second boss in library which is pretty hard to come by. It is really strong if you are in the true range of 2.84 tiles when both bullet hits, but weaker on the long distance. I would suggest doing libraries during the 1.5 loot event which happens pretty often. The blue alien dungeon Untaris, uh, which is common during alien event, also drops, drops the color from the last boss. The soul cursed scythe is a strong dagger when invisible. It is one of the new ST weapons that got added some months ago. The dagger itself when invisible is when not invisible is pretty lame. But when you cloak a powerful scythe that has damage of 2 to 300 and 3 bullets between you and the scythe, uh, it's pretty decent. It's a decent dagger on crowd damage because the scythe itself pierces. I'm happy that Decca added a dagger that is specially aimed towards rogue so it makes the class more interesting. Then of course the tier 13 and tier 14 dagger are the most versatile dagger of them all. You have a good base damage and you have a good chance of getting the both from O3. But if you don't want to try O3 yet, there if you can do void, that's a great drop location for the tier 13 dagger. But if you can't any, obtain any of these, tier 12 dagger will be fine if there's a good base dagger. Then we of course have the Seedurk copy, Aetherite, which is a stronger dagger than a tier 12 for example, but with a shorter range and fast shooter. So it, that's that's an upgrade of the tier 12 at least. I'm not going to mention Avarice from Gemspock and Seedurk because they of their rarity of course, but now with Item Forge, if you can obtain the blueprint these are the two the, definitely the best daggers in the game so if you get a blueprint for avarice or sea dirk and if you want to play rogue, uh, dagger classes and want to have a lot of damage you it is a good idea to go for these daggers then we have the cloaks well we have one of the most iconic cloaks of the mall cloak of the pain Walker, an old wild shadow slash kebab era cloak which is really po uh, powerful you can teleport on use and it, it's useful for boss fights or rushing. Cloak of Bloody Surprises, a powerful and rare cloak that drops from the Lost Sentry. On use you get slowed but you get an increase of attack by 25, which increases your DPS drastically. It's better to use this on bosses where you don't have to dodge that much and you can be slowed for some time. The Vampiric Cape is a great combination with the Soul Cursed Scythe from Manor. If you have the dagger equipped and use the cloak, you get an increase of 10 dexterity for 4 seconds. It could be even stronger if you have the whole SD set equipped, which gives you a 35 plus dexterity boost with the 10 from the cloak. The new cloak from the third dimension is the first cloak that does pure damage. It leaves like bomb, bomb like bursts of the, your rogue on use. It could be useful on solos where you want to be strong when invisible uh, if you don't have a bloody cloak. But the problem with this is that you have to stand closer to the boss or enemies but if you are alone it's a great way to do some extra damage. A great way to increase your damage is to combine the bloody cloak with the vampiric cape. Use bloody cloak with the soul cursed scythe and the vampire cape. If, you, if I understand this right you can get a plus 25 attack from the bloody cloak and then if you switch to the vampire cape you get a plus 10 dexterity boost if you are shooting with the soul cursed side. Now that's a lot of damage. 
on the armor perspective, I would recommend the Leaf Dragon Hide armor actually. It has a decent HP boost by 50 and a speed increase of 6. It lacks defense, but if you're using a Pyro for example, it works well together. Since Rogue has a cooldown on its ability, every cloak has a cooldown, it is good to use a HP ring, no mana needed here. If you have a rare pet, you will often regen all your MP that you spent for the cloak, so a HP ring here is great. Well, that's the most notable daggers and cloak for Rogue. I hope this helped in some way for you guys to maybe dare to pick Rogue to play. It is one of the most played classes pre-pets, but the Rogue's ability got pretty useless when the pets got introduced. I'm happy that Decca added uh, new and interesting abilities for the class that once got punished with the introduction of pets. Now that's everything for today and I hope you liked the video and stay tuned for my next video or stream and to do that you have to follow and subscribe.